funny. There's so much that they're going to do. Right. It's, it's your box of opportunity is small. Mm -hmm. And there's a gap. Like if you if you are in poverty, there is health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, if you are employed, there's maybe decent health insurance um, with your job, maybe. But if you're in that middle to low income range where you still don't qualify for subsidies on the marketplace, you know, that insurance is prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have the marketplace you know, there are people who are covered because that's there who otherwise wouldn't be, who have, you know, I know someone who pays $21 a month for her health insurance and it's good insurance. It's zero deductible insurance. So there are people getting good insurance um, through the systems that we have, but there are people who can't get it and that shouldn't be. It's, it's that it's that lower middle class working. Mm -hmm. and it's because they're working a job, so they're working making X amount of money, so they can't get the free or discounted insurance, but they also can't afford the, the insurance through their employer either. Right. Yeah, and if it's offered through your employer, you're not eligible for the subsidies. Mm -hmm. And you, they say that it, well, if it's such and such expensive through your employer, if it's like more than, I don't remember, 30% of your income or something like that through your employer, then, okay, we'll give you the subsidies. That's only for a single person. Yeah. So for a family, that doesn't count. It can be astronomically expensive through your employer for a family, and you're still ineligible for the subsidies on the marketplace. So what employers do is they make your um, single payer insurance, or they make your single coverage lower so that you have to accept it from them, but the family through the roof. That's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame. Get fucked over left and right. Yes. Pain. Suffering. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you got to write fiction, right? You got to write horror fiction. What exactly. else are we going to do? Exactly. All right, so how long from start to finish did it take you to complete? Um, well, I wrote it as little stories kind of in between other projects and most of them are pretty short. Um, let me think, I put out ooze in just a second. We're actually gonna talk about ooze next too. Yeah, I put out Ooze, I think, in February. And then I put out another book, Cargo. I don't know, maybe three months? Three months, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe maybe about three months to write it. And then I had the cover for a long time. I, I kind of had the cover from the very beginning. Um, and then I kind of filled in with different ideas as I went and some of the ideas I like tried to get published or like published on their own side effects include was a solo short um, that I sold on its own and that went really really well so I was like wait a minute maybe there's something going on with this medical horror here maybe people want to read it maybe I can do this so I think that the whole idea of the medical horror collection came from side effects include which is about the woman who um started taking, she she got a cream for hair loss. She mm -hmm. turned 40 and started losing her hair and she got a cream and the cream caused erupting blisters and the treatment for the erupting blisters made all of her hair fall out and the treatment. So, and it was like each treatment caused another thing to happen. Um, and yeah, so that's one of people's favorite stories. I, I, I love side effects include. Uh, it's got a, it's got a really fun, ending that I'm definitely not going to spoil, but yeah. How about plastic surgery? So many women are risking their lives to get fake titties, asses, lips, all that good stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's your body. Like that, I think that's where, I think I used to be in the position of, um, you know, why would you do that to yourself? Um, or like that's vanity but I ended up knowing a couple of women who had um, who had breast implants done and they had just become very like unhappy 
um, when they looked in the mirror, they were very unhappy, like they had had kids and their breasts were no longer, um, they didn't feel like they didn't feel right. They didn't feel good about their body. And they somehow had the $5,000 or whatever it took to put new titties on and hey. <laughs> <laughs> I should say, I should say, say the ones who are going to Mexico and the DR or oh yeah, that's... illegal, which I feel like a lot of this country are doing. There's a story. There's a story for you. The infections. Um, yeah. yeah. Or it's... like to go somewhere and get like gastric bypass because it's it's a big procedure to get gastric bypass in the United States or um, like legally they, they make you lose a certain amount of weight and you know show that you can follow a strict diet and then some places will just just you can, do but it you, but you can almost tell why well, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming i can tell as a man but i can tell um so like the beat they're called bbls the 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 fake asses i can tell if it was done in a foreign country or if it was done in this country <laughs> Because the I just don't thing, pay that much attention to asses. I guess I'm not an ass girl. Yeah, I'm, I'm not an ass guy either. But, but I, I, I mean, but but like you can see them a mile away, and and, and it looks like a wisdom tooth. Like they're <laughs> like a wisdom tooth. It's the weirdest built, and it's oh like, no, who the fuck is attracted it's to the that? off brand ass. <laughs> it, it looks like a wisdom tooth ass, but uh, <laughs> that should have distracted. <laughs> but I've seen. I've seen, um, I'm pretty sure you've seen the videos too, where a lot of women are going to Dominican Republic to get these um, implants and they're injecting the ass with concrete. Have you seen those? No, no, yeah. I didn't know anything about that. They're injecting these women's asses with concrete. And, and over in the Dominican Republic, Jamaica and places, there's no standards on the medical profession who can do surgeries. And so forth. So you can get some drunk guy who has a surgical basement. You can't sue him. Like, I am like, shocked. That is shocking. That is yeah. shocking that you would let somebody inject your butt with concrete. I like watching that. There's a, I don't know if it's still on Netflix, but it was called Botch. Oh. And it took place in the UK. And yeah, there was a lot of. Um, women that were going there because they were going to foreign countries. They have a couple. They didn't have the five thousand. They had fifteen hundred. Mm. New DR and have concrete injecting their ass. Yeah, not what you want. No. Not what you want. Nope. Nope. And how do you even get it out? I don't know. I I, mean, I, I watched the episode because there was one, I, and there was another woman who had a concrete injected in her fucking lips like they were giving her uh was it face um face botox or whatever but they but they, they, they use concrete and they had to chip the concrete out of her, mouth, her lips and so forth but ah. a lot of this a lot of women in this country go to foreign well, i say foreign countries south america and central america to get their plastic surgeries done and they definitely come back looking like a wasn't to. An infected one, I imagine. Mm -hmm. But they got the big old hard looking basketball tits, you know. <laughs> With the battle scar on the side. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> baby. That's not what they went for, but that's what they came I, back with. And I know that has to be told my pain. That has to be painful. That has to be painful. And imagine it will get infected. It is going to get an effect on And somebody's chipping concrete at your ass. I mean, that sounds painful. Sitting on, on, a, on, a, on an ass made out of concrete sounds painful. We're we're writing stories right now. We're writing a story right now. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm actually working on a new medical people. horror. My next novella is going to be medical horror, too. Yes. This I just started story. it. Um, it's about a man who his little girl is sick and um is kind of a medical mystery and the insurance won't pay for any additional tests they say we found the answer and it's like something that it's not and they send him home with a z-pack 
and say that she has some sort of infection. Um, and he knows that's not true, but he can't get any more medical care. So he starts Googling it and uh, following all the advice that he finds on the internet um, all the way down the road to where he's doing like these really extreme things, extreme medical procedures on his daughter um, to try and cure her, but he kind of loses his mind a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the book that I'm working on. Good one. I'm it's scary. That. What's that? I'm looking forward to, to that one. That sounds good. Thanks. I hope it, go I hope, I hope it doesn't take too long. <laughs> I don't like it when books take too long to write. So show us the front cover of, um, oh fuck, oh fuck again. It, it, the, front the front cover is great. Thank you. I made that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Yep. Amazing. You know exactly what you're what, what you're in store for when you see that cover. Yeah, you <laughs> it's gonna be jammed down your throat. <laughs> so you actually in February you actually put up another book called Ooze. Yes. So Little Bursts of Ooze. Body Horror. Yep, yep, here's that one. Ooze Little Bursts of Body Horror. This one is in um some bookstores. Um I saw a picture of it the other day on an end cap in a Barnes and Noble. Nice. And I was like, ah! <laughs> so yeah, this one's getting picked up. Um, it's being read and it is 21 um, very short body horror stories. So usually like the, the longest one is 2,500 words and most of them are quite a bit shorter than that. It features Judith Sonnet and Roland Bercy Jr. and several other really great authors. Um, it is super disgusting um and has all kinds of things happening to the human body um and i i had never done an anthology before um i hadn't even hardly been in any anthologies like i'm i was i'm a fairly new writer uh on the horror scene it's only been a couple of years but i just had this idea and i was like ooh short short body horror that yeah. sounds fun um so i made a cover and i put out a call and i was like i'll pay ten dollars a story it's what i can do because i'm not a fundraising type of person i don't like to do kickstarters and raise money so i just put together a, a little bit of money and um paid for them ten dollars at a time and i got like 300 submissions and just reading them like my brain just like was so full of like melting flesh and crawling worms under your skin and like oh. like eyeballs <laughs> bursting and like it was <laughs> it was <laughs> it's a good thing I like body horror I'll put it that way there was only one I couldn't read um and that's that's saying a lot it was pretty bad that I couldn't read it because I read some stuff but I love ooze because it's not just a gross out book like mm -hmm. it's a very um emotional book and the horror like the body horror is kind of what brings you there but the stories like i really went for stories that had plot and substance um so i'm just really really happy with how it's going and uh bridget nelson did the foreword for it and her foreword is really good um it's about chicken pox and it's like a little true body horror story and so um yeah it's on amazon and uh in ebook and paperback and it's on godless and it's available for bookstores to order i'm writing it down right now on my list i'm putting it on my amazon wish list sweet um so we actually have a mutual friend christopher pelton oh yeah, yeah. yes he introduced us yes chris so, is awesome chris is amazing isn't he yeah i love working with him i'm actually interviewing him and Hart at the same so i've interviewed both of them separately and now i'm interviewing them together this week so that's gonna be interesting very cool very cool i appreciate him a lot he's done a lot all right so where can we find you? Um, I live on Facebook and on Twitter, but since Twitter's gone down a little bit um, yeah. recently, I've I've been a little bit more active on Facebook. Um, Ruth Anna Evans is a personal profile. Not um, I don't have an author page that I'm very active on. I didn't see a lot of 
benefit to my author page. So I just am making friends and connections and I promote on my personal page. I have no problem with self-promotion. So if that, if that bothers you, you probably don't want to go on my page because I'm always shouting my stuff and my friend's stuff and everybody's stuff off to the, off the rooftops. Um, I feel like self-promotion is totally valid. Um, yeah. as long as you're not like dropping your links on other people's posts or going on, you know, groups that say, don't self-promote here and self-promoting. So, you know, you have to follow the rules and that kind of thing, but your own page is your own space. And, um, I sell books on there and I sell book covers too. So that's, that's something else about me. I am a book cover designer. I stay pretty busy with it. So, um, you can check me out on ruthannaevans.com. Um, all of my books are there and all my cover design services too. So, yep, ruthannaevans.com. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to hit you with one quick horror question. Okay. Ready? What is one horror movie that everybody says is, oh my God, it's so amazing, so amazing. You're like, mm -hmm. that's a piece of crap. Um, I am fairly easy to please when it comes to horror. I don't like slashers, except for Halloween. Like, I love Halloween, but I feel like a lot of slashers are somewhat derivative. Um, I mean, of course they're derivative, they're tropes, and it's supposed to be that way. They're honoring, you know, the history of slashers, and I understand that, but I just find them boring. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna call out a certain film because I, I'm not a critic. Um, <laughs> in my soul, I'm really just not a critic. But I just uh, like my husband falls asleep when we watch movies at night, <laughs> and I've learned that, so we don't do it very much anymore. But when we do, as soon as he falls asleep, I am turning that movie off. I do not want to see another knife through another rib cage. I do not want to see another person with their throat slit like i just i just don't care <laughs> and if, if you've seen my show for me it's the original friday the 13th i oh. say that it's great it's definitely a knockoff of halloween i mean it's the, Friday, the whole friday the 13th series to me is a knockoff of, of michael myers i like i like the um makeup on the first one a uh, friday yeah yeah, I mean, I mean Tom, Tom Savini did a great job on it. Yeah. But the story was bad. Like, it's not one of those movies that it's hard to sit through. It really is. I mean, it, yeah, watch, I've seen that uh, one a lot. Or, and they play it every Friday the 13th. And I yeah, literally. Yeah, I've seen that one a lot. I think that's, I, that one is on my list of I'm never going to watch it again. Yeah. And it, and it took a long time for me to get to that point. I've seen that movie over again. I was like, but you know what movie was great. amazing was um, Cabin in the Woods. So. In the Woods, that's still, is that the. Cabin. Yes, Kevin was amazing. Yes, yes. Yes. So, yeah. like, there are good things that can be done with that genre. Yes. Yes. But I'm not huge, and I'm not like a know all the movies person. So, and <laughs> my depth is plumbed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's pretty much what I got. <laughs> Another one too that I get shit for Jaws. I don't see the. Oh, you don't like Jaws? I thought. Listen, I loved Jaws as a kid. Love Jaws as a kid. Okay. It seems like the older I got, I'm like, oh, well, why did I like that movie? It was like Jurassic Park. I loved the Jurassic Park movies as a kid. I can't watch them as an adult. Aw, I love Jaws. Yeah. You don't have to, though. You don't have to love Jaws. <laughs> no, I'm, listen, I'm not saying Jaws is a bad movie. I'm just saying it's over. Well, that's good because you can't it's say Jaws is a bad movie, but uh, yeah. if it's not it's for you, over, it's just overhyped. Just mm. like Friday the 13th original. Is overhyped. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, when it's built up to that iconic status, it's hard for anything to live up to to that level. It is. Well, listen, everybody, go on Amazon, go to Barnes and Noble, find ooze, and <laughs> oh fuck, oh fuck, it hurts. And. Check out Ruth on all social media, uh, social, uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, 
Twitter slash X, whatever it's called. I'm on all those places. Yeah. I just started TikTok. <laughs> I put I I just TikTok posted videos cool. on TikTok. I'm I'm everywhere. Yeah, definitely check it out. And if you're you know if you're a little squeamish, I would pass on. There's just some there's some fun stories in there, even if you're squeamish. But if you're squeamish and you like being squeamish, yes, and like that feeling of like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go for it, but if you want to be people who like watching a um, Dr. Pimple Popper, this is good. For yeah, you. yes. Good. If you're a pimple popper person, you're yeah. missing out <laughs> if you don't read these books. <laughs> I would say if you're a person that when you look up a medical disorder and you go and you have to hit images to see what that shit looks like, this is for you. <laughs> yeah. And the people who have really been connecting with this book are the people with chronic illnesses. So I feel like that is a huge audience for me um, and who I kind of wrote this book for is people who deal with the pain and suffering of medical horror. And um, so I hope it gets to them. Like I have psoriasis. It fucking sucks. And mm. Oh, <laughs> autoimmune is for you. <laughs> and I'm easily, I, I can get sick easily. I have a weakened immune system. So yeah. I can't be around somebody coughing or sneezing. I'm one of the people who wear um who was wearing a mask on planes before COVID was a thing, you know. I just can't be around sick people. Yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute blast. Thank you for My pleasure. On. I would love for you to come back on and hopefully I will see you at some of these horror conventions too. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cool. Especially this one. Um in Williamsburg, Virginia, I'm definitely gonna fucking be there for that. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a good one. That yeah. is gonna be a good one for sure. Scares the care. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It has been an absolute pleasure. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the horror room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.